Episode Porsche 911 of the Two Thick Pod, your home for all things sports card levity. I'm Jeremy. This is Manny. What's going on, kids? What's up? How are you? And we have a special guest today. You know, the most popular person in the hobby right now. We, we got Mr. Bro Namath, Liver King's daddy. So we have <laughs> Liver King's daddy in the house. I'm excited. This is going to be a good one. Uh, Dude, I, how can you not say you are, you are the most popular person? person in the hobby listen with the intro that i just witnessed sitting behind screen there's no way that you guys aren't the most famous po podcast right now that was epic dude <laughs> let me tell you something everywhere i go your name gets brought up it gets brought up like even if i try to avoid it it gets brought into it you know whether it's card collector 2 like these people with hundred thousand everybody's got to follow card collector too, just because he, who he is. Everybody engages with you and everybody's got like a legitimate story where they've done deals with you. They've interacted with you. You've helped them out. And more times it's you've helped them out than vice versa. You are like, seriously, you're everywhere. I'm just easy to kick down the street, man. I'm like that can that keeps floating around places. I, I absolutely love the modesty. I love the <laughs> modesty. Take the fucking compliment, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jeremy, for your compliment. That's awesome. I, I do want, before we get started, I want to say congrats, Jeremy, for winning the Super Bowl. You guys got the number one pick and the Packers lost for your Bears. So congrats on getting your next quarterback. Yeah, man. Big ups to look. No, Justin Fields is the greatest quarterback in the NFL. And big ups to Lovey Smith throwing Chicago a bone, going out there and winning a game that's going to cost the Texans millions of dollars. That's a beautiful thing. No, I said that because you're a bandwagon. Look at your hat right now. I, I support my people. Just like when I was down in Tampa, I wear a fucking Tampa hat. You just you, you make people feel good. Everybody knows we're Chicago through and through over here. J Jack of all trades. Yes. <laughs> Correct, man. Love so that. big thing I've been seeing a lot lately, and I just want to dive right into this, is what's going on with the collectible? Because you're, you're sharing their stuff. They're sharing your stuff. I'm seeing the eyeballs. There's clearly something brewing there. I see the black labels. What's going on with collectible? So they're having a, uh, a new auction format releasing at the end of the month. It's, it's a BWIC auction. Uh, what it is is it's basically like a silent auction. Um, and you'd have to read their post to have it better articulated than what I'm saying. I could completely butcher it. I'm not entirely framework of it. But I want to say, I don't know how long it lasts, but you have silent bids that go throughout. And then the final three highest bidders are then – notified hey you guys are the three highest bidders we're going to the next day round the next day is you submit your best and final offer and that's it and no one knows what the offers are competing to one another are that's uh yeah i in, i first heard of the bwick auction i was actually on linkedin so i probably from a social media perspective for my real my real job linkedin is a very powerful tool but i follow collectible and they popped up and i saw in their press release i saw a picture of some TCG black label. And I just thought to myself, like, can't, I can't escape this man. What the hell's going on? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably over my head to describe it properly. The, the article's available. It's on sports, uh, sports.yahoo.com. But I think that's pretty awesome. I know, uh, there's been some conversations, but I think it's cool. You're bringing a lot of, uh, eyeballs to the TCG scene. That's something I would have never even explored or even looked at. I would have just been like, not for me. And now I'm fucking intrigued because these cards are incredible looking. I follow Gem Rate and I see there's more TCG cards being graded than anything else. And I'm like, holy shit, there's a there's a there's a literal market there. Huge market. Is did you see also that Batman comic book? I was so sick. That's so nasty. sick. <laughs> so so the TCG, um, this is their first TCG item that they are offering on their platform. Uh, so it's kind of special. We had a conversation with uh, with Ezra, CEO, and just sat there and, and talked a little bit. And they, they really want to expand. They want to get broader spectrum of stuff. So they got video games offered on there. They have uh, TCG, which is my lot. They have the comic books. So they're doing a good job. And the, and the stuff that they're they're providing is very curated, rare, highly desirable pieces that uh, you know have value. It's not just like some of these auction houses now just have so much flooded in there that you have like dollar and $5 items. It's kind of hard to, to navigate. 
Is that is that your main reason why you chose collectible? Because you could have sent this set anywhere, right, to any auction house. Is that why your main focus is was to send it to collectible rather than, like, for example, we'll say other auction houses that have like those five to one dollar range cards that could get flooded, and you can't even you don't even see these cards. They don't get the eyeballs it should deserve. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at it just released a press release, and they have like my set on there on the cover of it, and I think that's that's awesome. And that's mm-hmm. someone that's, you know, that's sending in stuff. And like, listen, I, I don't do this as my day to day and I don't have a ton of money. I'm not, you know, multi-billionaire like some of these guys that have these big pieces. So for me to be able to see that they're using this to, to push a little bit for this auction, that makes me happy. You know what I mean? Like I put money into this and I don't have like all this money to throw around. So it's nice to be able to see that they're pushing it for me. I, one word I keyed in on was curate. And didn't you just win the award for best curated collection recently? Yep. <laughs> and so, like, I was looking at this, and this is like a this is like just a dream for you because you dabble in sneakers. You definitely love com- comic books. You like sports cards. You like sports, and you 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 obviously have a a strong passion for TCG. So uh, the match makes sense to me from an outsider's perspective. You know, I I love the direction. You know, I had really you know you you sit down, you have a meeting with somebody, and you know if you like get along with them. You kind of have the same vibe like us. Like I know we've, we've spoken at the national. I was like, man, I really like you guys. So it's more natural for us to sit here and have a conversation. I felt the same way having a meeting with collectible. I mean, this is really natural. It was a good fit. So I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with what they're doing. I love it. Is this the same uh, set that you're trying to finish at the national where you're trying yeah. to, like, Hey, Jeremy, Manny, keep an eye on this wizard. Um, I need it as a BGS 10. It's the only one. It's like the cheapest the disrespect one. disrespect the wizard. <laughs> I think oh, that's what it's God. called. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> um, yeah, it is actually. So after the national, I was two cards away, ended up getting the other card. And then the uh, last card that I needed, there just wasn't a black label. And a buddy of mine over in Hong Kong ended up uh, hitting one in the black label. He sent me a DM. He was like, you're not going to believe it. I was like, what's up? Months had passed by. He had shot me a DM. I was like, holy shit. Are you kidding me? I was like, I have to have it. He's like, and he didn't really kill me over the price either. It's probably a little bit more than it should have been. But I mean, it still wasn't a just straight like slaughter because I needed that card. He knew I needed that card. Mm-hmm. Once word got out that you had completed the set, did you start getting, you know, feelers or people trying to, you know, get the set from you or did you keep it under wraps well enough that uh, this is going to be news to a lot of folks in that community? No, no one thought that I'd be selling the set. Um, when I did complete it, it was more of, holy cow, this is one of the best TCG feats um, to be accomplished in a while. Just because it, who does that? You know, like, I mean, yeah, like 12 card set that's so rare, only 20 cards, each card produced to be able to get a full black label set of 12 cards is nuts uh yeah it's nuts so a lot of people were talking in that they were saying that's like the greatest tcg thing of 2022 this that and the other and a lot of good chats i met a lot of good people on the way doing it It was a blast uh trying to acquire all of them and uh building some good friendships and relationships out of it but no one thought i'd be selling it so as soon as did you guys hear that or no that was me no (laughs) um so when it uh when it ended up being pressed out the past couple of days, people were like, holy crap, you're selling it? I was like, yeah, let's see what happens. I'm excited. I'm excited. I want you to do really well on this. Um, I'll be keeping an eye out. I have no idea. Like, when will, Like when does it end? No, so I, I want to say it starts at the end of the month. I'm not sure how long it runs for. I mean, I, I'm literally just trying to, like, catch up on it, too. I've been so busy the past couple of weeks. I haven't really read the fine print of everything that I signed with, so. <laughs> man that's um would you say within your from all the things that you collect everything from the funko pops to the books to the sports cards is this your greatest feat you had to go there yeah. what? You, you had to go there with the funko pops you had to see and this is why i don't share that story because now <laughs> everyone is in my dms beating me up about the funkos just want to throw that out there so i won't be surprised if i get funko gifts at the national well, no. Okay. So on a side note, I think that's what makes you approachable and why so many, so many people gravitate towards you because you share real life things that happen. So much stuff that we see on social media are win, win, win. Nobody ever sh- shares the, the, the losses or 
selling too early and t- taking seven and turning it into 10 or whatever the number was that exactly isn't a loss. There's just some, no. maybe some margin that wasn't recognized. It's, no. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, you think <laughs> <laughs> so? So we, I, that happened, man. And we had just moved into our new apartment. Uh, my fiance at the time we had got married and then as soon as we got married, probably like two, three months later go by. And all of a sudden that's when I realized what had happened. I looked at her. I was like, Oh my God. I was like, you don't even want to know. I was like, I was like, this is your fault. I go, this is your fault. <laughs> she just sat there. It's like, no, those aren't worth that much. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know, essentially, and this is your story, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to do cliff notes, was into Funko Pops for like seven, pressure from the girlfriend and wife to mature and grow the fuck up, sells them for 10, has them like cataloged somehow, and one day is just shooting the breeze, looks at it and realizes the collection present day value within like 145K at peak or something like that did i, did I touch them all? yeah you touched it right on the head so for people that are into funko pops i was into it for the jump i was buying clamshells of dc which is uh extremely rare if you know what those are green lantern batman batgirl yep so stuff like that well i mean but to, to your credit though that just proves that you're the way that you operate in the hobby like being early and being first has been it's proven to be fruitful for you. And I've been open and honest and we credit you for like some of our strategy, the way court and I operate is like, that works, man. Let's not get greedy. If you can two X your money and somebody else makes more then that's great. Like just keep it moving. Yeah. I do have a, I do have a question. Yeah, on. I, I, hold hold on, on Manny. Hold on, Manny. I still want to know what's your greatest feat. Is this completing this oh. set, the greatest hobby feat? Oh yes. Because I didn't think it was possible. Um, you know, if, if you have a certain amount of money, you can buy anything you want to try to get, but I just didn't think this was possible. So yes, hundred percent. Bigger than the Dragon Ball Z, uh, that gold, uh, TCG card, the champion card. Was it the national champion one? The black label one that I got? Yep. Yeah. But, but see, I went and bought that card. So okay. it was, a, it was obtainable, right? Like this, to be able to get all 12 cards in black label and, and, you know, source them was insane. I mean, that was, that was just nuts. Where does one go to learn about TCG? Like, let's just say like I wanted to, cause sometimes you, you price stuff and I'm like, well, if he's selling it, he's usually well under comps. Like maybe I should just buy some of this stuff and uh, figure it out. But where would one go to educate themselves other than DMing you a million times a day? Um, I mean, really anywhere you can go to eBay. Uh, you can go to, um, I'm trying to, Think of other places like eBay. Obviously, is a big indicator. So everyone looks at right now, anyways, for what we're looking at. There's a site called TCGplayer.com. Okay. So if people are wanting to get into TCG, TCGplayer.com. I'm giving you guys some some inside info here. Uh, that is where hobby shops sell raw cards. So you have to have an account. So some of these hobby shops around the U.S. What they'll do is they'll buy products that comes in. They'll rip it and then they'll sell the singles on TCG player because sometimes it's a uh, more, you know, better advantage to sell the singles and break them out that way than it is to sell the, the wax. And they do really well because people want to buy certain cards and build decks and things like that. So if you go to tcgplayer.com, you'll see a huge uh, resource uh, of, of what values are raw cards. And typically people kind of go off of that, but demand obviously is a big thing. It's so like when one piece came out, um, you can go on, you know, TCG player and kind of see what the values of raw cards are. And then, you know, graded is, is really up in the air, right? So if you know that a card's a hundred dollars raw, if it's BGS 10 gold label, that should be like what 300 ish or so. And if it's a black label, maybe around a grand or so. Um, and then just, you know, then it becomes how many of those are easy to be obtained. How many black labels are being hit? How many gold tens are being hit? Then it's like a sliding scale. I let the market kind of determine what the value is because you guys i don't know if you ever noticed but like on ebay i'll just run one day auctions two day auctions you know five day auctions and just let them land wherever they land one thing i noticed with the ebay auction i think you promote all of yours do you see the value in promoting it does it get that much more of an audience relative to or opposed to not running it promoted yeah, absolutely. I, at least I believe so. I mean, the, the views and watches I get are, are pretty good. I mean, granted, I, I do some promoting on my own on my Instagram, uh, but it seems to do pretty well. I get a lot of followers now on my eBay. So, you know, people that DM me asking me, hey, if you're going to list this up again, I miss it by so and so. And then I had some guy that was like running all my auctions up like an asshole. 
that I had to deal with, which was a prick. But then I quickly learned that you can do a second chance offer to people, which I'm not sure if you guys know this, but on your eBay, you can do that for people out there that don't know if someone kind of shilled you or didn't want to you know, purchase it. You can always send a second chance offer, I think, to the second and third highest bidder on what their late, their last bid was. So doing that, I sold some stuff. And then I kind of told the guy, hey, look, you're just only helping me, I guess, being an asshole. So he just eventually stopped doing it. This is the same guy that was given Trees Collectibles uh, a problem, right? Yeah, dude. He ran amok in the Dragon Ball community. Just an absolute scumbag. He's over in the UK, makes different accounts and just runs stuff up, doesn't pay he did a couple of chargebacks and some stuff. Um, yeah, he's he's people like that suck. That's good. For, to know. That's good to know because if someone's trying to get into the TCG world, make sure that it's not. I mean, we all look to see if stuff shield, but if there's like certain people out there that are actually just going through the Dragon Ball Z trying to shield up everything, it's good to keep track of who's it, doing. It, it doesn't make any sense because he doesn't even have any of the cars he's shilling. He's just doing it just to like screw with people it's it's very odd it, there's no advantage there's nothing he's getting out of this he's just doing it just to be a douchebag yeah that's a shame is the bgs 10 the gold and then the black label like considered like the premiere in the tcg community or does a psa 10 um huge not... drop yeah okay. huge drop yeah you know like in in sports it's weird because now psa 10 bgs 10 don't have that large of a gap like it used to um, but now in TCG, it's a huge gap. You know, a card may be a hundred dollars in PSA 10 and BGS 10 gold label could be $300. Oh, like wow. it's a, it's a huge yeah. price disparity. Yeah. Cause it's really easy to get PSA 10s and some TCG stuff. It's not that easy in BGS and people really put a high value on that. What's the reason? Is it, um, like that was one of my questions. Cause I, I follow you. So I see a lot of black labels. So that's what I'm seeing. Is it like the card stock is different than a normal like I haven't like touched a raw card. I don't know if is it like, kind of like the Pixar cards that you open, kind of like a that type of set for a TCG. Yeah, I mean they, they all vary. Like you know Pokemon stuff, um, they just mass produce Pokemon, so a lot of times the quality control isn't there. A lot of the corners are kind of shot. But if you notice, right, there's no real sharp corners, and the edges for the most part are always perfect. Uh, and one of the two things in sports cars that always gets hit, it's corners and edges, right? Um, and, and out of the pack, they're typically pretty good if you handle them correctly. I mean, centering, it is what it is. You know, you're not going to be able to, to fix any centering on cards. And with TCG, I just literally, there's no secret. Everyone's like, oh, you you backdoor grade and you're paying for black labels. And you're doing all this crazy <laughs> shit. Like, listen, guys, what I'm doing, you can do. I literally take it inspect it make sure there's nothing on it sleeve it and then put into a card saver and that's it i don't do anything different beyond doing more quantity that helps me be able to get some black labels that's about it it's funny you say that too because jeremy and i were talking and you basically lay out how to make money in the hobby it's just and what jeremy i quote jeremy he's like just people are lazy and won't want to do it so i mean it's it's crazy because you could go up to you i want to go back I went and asked you, we barely knew each other, right? Um, this was prior and I had a comic book. I had Werewolf 32 and I got it from my uncle. It was the first appearance of Moon Knight. And I, I, you barely knew me. You knew I worked w with Lucas Tigers Bronze. I sent a thing and I was like, hey, do you know what I should do with this? And you like gave me a nice description. And then you also gave me My Hero card. I was interested in these My Hero cards. I had the magas and I read the magas and I watched the show. That was like my first anime to watch. And you told me about TCG player. The only thing that scares me about the TCG player is this the same site you were telling me where they post it and you could buy a quantity, but you don't know the like the actual condition because it's just one card, right? Yeah, well, they, it, you really don't know the condition at all because you don't see the card. It's it's basically like a shopping list, right? You'll see a stock image of the card and then you'll see maybe 15, 20 different um, dealers have that card and how many quantity and what their price they're asking for. I've never had, listen, I've gotten black labels off a TCG player, right? And, but at the same time, we're talking about cards that are 15, 20, 40, $50 maybe, where in, in there's a giant disconnect between TCG and sports, whereas sports, everyone's trying to get over on the other person. 
And I don't mean that like across the board because there's people like us, like, you know, in our circle and people that we know that always look out for one another. But for the most part, that's not the case. Like people are, are ripping cards if they're selling it raw it's because there's something wrong with it because they're not going to grade it um, unless there's someone that you can trust. It's just it, it, that person wants to sell to make money. That person wants to sell to make money. And TCG is not necessarily the same. Different crowd. I think that's one of my favorite things. And so I've, I've had a blast, you know, cultivating a relationship with you. And I, I know I can speak for court is it's to me, like the good feeling is getting the stuff that we want. If you're able to make a buck, great, but helping out the people around you. And as a result of the cardboard, all of a sudden you're, you, you've built like some serious friendships or, or relationships or people that you can count on. Like I remember when I was like looking at some Christian Hernandez orange, I was in Shipshawana. And I wasn't sure, like, based on price. And so I'm like, man, I'm going to reach out to Brandon. And sure enough, he, you know, he uh, pulled the Porsche over and he gave me a rundown on what to buy, what not to buy, and why I thought it was good. And it was just, to your point, like, it's frustrating to see people just trying to take advantage of other people because I just, I think it's a shit thing to do. It happens too frequently, too. And I think it scares a lot of people out of the, of the hobby. You, you think the main reason is because it's more of a it's more of a collector base with TCG yeah. and, and um, like even if you want to do like comic throw that in there as well rather than sports cards everyone most of the people that are in the hobby now well, a lot of them left but they were flippers right they wanted to get their money get out um and I just think that that's the separation right I that's kind of my Dude, it's so I I wore a shirt this is a plug for my buddy um south supply he, he owns a company makes us a t-shirt so i wore a a one-piece shirt out today with my wife after we had some errands to run and we're at we're at brunch and this guy's like man i, oh, I love your shirt i love shanks I, I love one piece and we start talking about one piece and you know this that and the other and i go to the gym and i get a couple compliments and talk to somebody else and i go to the bank and the guy talks to me about my shirt i go to fedex and he starts talking about other animes like that that's genuine love for an entire genre of anime, right? And it, 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 huge, 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 huge love pool where people can actually come together and collect and talk about it. And I'm not dogging sports at all. Listen, I love sports. I love, I love Bowman Chrome. As you guys know, that's like my favorite sport product to rip. But when you look at sports cards, everyone's looking to make a dollar off the next person with sports cards, right? Like that's what it's all about. There's not many true collectors out there anymore. There, of course there are here and there, but those guys are like dollar bin hunting and they're making sets and they're building sets. So the true collectors are, are, the, are the super fans who strictly collect LeBron and Jordan and Curry and all these players, which, which is huge. And now those people are starting to rejoice because now they can buy some stuff they weren't able to get over the past couple of years. But usually you have people that are, okay, I'm, I want to make $100 off this car, $500 off this car, and they're passing along. And that same mentality is the same thing when sports is sports betting. So now I keep seeing everyone on Instagram, well, take my sports bets, do this and this, that, and the other. Like it's just, it's just one giant greed filled ball where with TCG, it's not what you're getting. It's just, it's just not, of course, people are making money here and there, but that I may sell something like this set may get sold. It may not be seen for another five, 10 years. Mm-hmm. Whereas if every week on Golden and PWCC, you're seeing the same damn that rare works. grail card flipped again and again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah, three I, times over. <laughs> that's I, I'm going to say it's that stupid-ass Brady card I see every single auction. And I don't get it. I don't get why the people just don't hold at this point <laughs> with it. Dude, there, I have so many theories. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many theories, but you know, it's uh, that I did, it's just it's so much more fun in the TCG space. It really is. I just I've always been a TCG guy, so people may look at me and be like, "Oh man, like you know, you're just getting a TCG because sports isn't doing well." Like that's not the case at all. Like I was I was in the TCG before I got into sports cards heavily. Um, I've been collecting Dragon Ball since you know 2017 when it first started and kicked off. And, and, and you know, the, the, I'm tired of the narrative that sports aren't doing well. Sports are perfectly fine. If yeah. you follow like some pretty basic principles, like buy in bulk in the off season, sell before a player gets injured, buy the right product, the right player. And you're okay. You're not like five, six, seven Xing your money. Like you were for a couple of years, but like you can slowly churn and, and turn two into four, four into eight. You know what I mean? Without a doubt. Too many people became 
entitled to making money in the hobby. All right. Like they'd go to Walmart and they expect if I buy this prism blaster, I should double my money on eBay. Yeah. So I've, I've always had a theory and it's, uh, and you might find it relatable. You might not, but I've always told Manny, it's like, I grew up with nothing. And so I've always had to fight and work my ass off for every single thing. So even at this stage of my life, everything that I achieve, like there's always that surreal moment. Like, I can't believe that I'm experiencing this. I'm doing this. This is my life. So I've always known just hard work. Nothing's come easy. So I never once expected sports cards to be easy. So it's already been ingrained in me that like, Hey, if something's not working, you have to pivot, try something else and continue to work, work, work. And so I do think there's some parallels with real life and sports cards where like nothing's supposed to be easy. You're supposed to work for it. And as long as you're like, disciplined uh you can still you can still achieve the things that you're set out to achieve i agree 100 percent. i also think that if you're buying any type of tangible asset if if the item were to go down to zero like collectible space if the item would go down to zero would you be okay with that and if your answer is no then you probably shouldn't be investing in that piece but i, I think it would be a bold-faced lie if somebody was like excited yeah i don't give a shit like obviously um, even if you weren't even to look at an asset, but like a store of value, if something happened to me, right, God forbid something happened to me in court, like in the kids were just like, Hey, we want to take the Patrick Williams collection and get something for it. I would be hopeful that they would be able to get something for it. But to your point, if, if the collection went to zero, it wouldn't mean, or if the Jordan that you sold us, yeah, that was, that, that's cool. We grew up watching Jordan. The, the, the card has now sentimental value. And so if that, I, I don't, the cards that I own that we collect, I don't know the value of them. Yeah, well, but that, that, that's what I mean. Like for me, like if the Dragon Ball stuff just got like swiped, you know, I'm like, I'm, would it suck? Of course, because you put money into something. It's not the other thing got swiped. But at the end of the day, like I wouldn't give yeah. that big of a shit. I'd just go ahead and actually frame them and probably put them on my office or in my library. And I'm like, all right, well, that sucks. But, you know, at least I have this still because I can still appreciate it. I, I think a lot of people don't even appreciate what they have. They just have it because they think it's going to make them money. They don't give a shit about this, that, and the other. And uh, and then you hear him complain, well, I can't get rid of this fucking bum player or this, that, and the other. It's like, well, yeah. did you even believe in that guy in the first place? Did you even care about the team that you're investing in? Like, you know, like there's so many questions that I have that's, I don't know. I like that because I never really thought of it like that. But like when I'm thinking of my, what I do, do, like shoes, I'm big, like shoes, like when I get, it's bad now to have, but Yeezys. I just want them to wear. I don't want them to like sell. And I see people like that. I know there's sneakerheads that like want the, you know, pristine box and everything. I'm like, when I go to the store, I'm like, if they're used, but look clean. And if the box is damaged, that's just a discount for me, for me to wear. And that's how I, that's how I see shoes. So maybe in clothing. So maybe that's where I'm like, man, I don't care about my investment into my clothes. Cause it's, guess what? I'm going to grow out of them. They're going to get dirty. I'm wear, wearing them. So I like yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. So in, in your spare time from, you know, backdooring black labels or whatever shenanigans you're involved in, I do want to give you props because I noticed that you've got almost a perfect score on TripAdvisor for being a tour guide as the mayor of Orlando. How does that feel? Orlando, Tampa? Tampa, Orlando, it's all the same shit. <laughs> you just called him Mickey Mouse. How dare you come into my town and then compare us to fucking Orlando? First of all, <laughs> first of all, second of all, I take pride in my TripAdvisor score that is from Tampa, not from Orlando. Third of all, our town cannot be that bad that you forget it and refer to it as Orlando. He was, he, I, was he was bitching about his back because he said, "Oh, I can't. I'm too tall to sit in a Porsche. My back is killing me." No, this he, was he afterwards he he was pissed off that I ordered uh, a pizza without asking him if he even ate cheese just assuming that he's a normal human being like everyone else <laughs> on the planet and this guy he's over here picking cheese off of his pizza he's a child right. dude, like, dude. My, like, like my child at Chuck E. Cheese so, so in fairness this is the kind of guy that, that Brandon is right he goes hey you're you're here hit me up and so I was handling some stuff and I didn't want to be like a burden I didn't want to have like that awkward conversation like I'm here show me around. He's like, no, man, let's, let's get together. Let's go do something. So he pulls up 
everybody's looking at us and i see this car and i'm like shit dude am i gonna fit in this fucking thing and then you get in it's beautiful and then as we're going around and it's packed downtown tampa and i was like okay this is man this is a nice car and he's you know he's showing me around these beautiful homes you know his old stomping grounds and so he goes to this spot and it's like the most most popular spot and so you know we're, we're big dogs right and we we're like, I'm not fucking parking the car. We're valet or bust. And so they were, they, they were that packed. So he goes, I got you. Pulls out his phone, fucking hits the speed dial. I was like, yo, what's up, bro? Hey, I got somebody. You got a spot for me? Okay, cool. So we pull up to the spot. We back in, and there's a guy out there waiting for us. Now, if this is coincidence, possibly. This, this reenactment is hilarious, by the way. So, but this is like, <laughs> I felt like, I felt like the chick in a mob movie. So the guy's waiting for us out back. We go through the back of the restaurant into the kitchen, through the kitchen, two spots laid out at the bar. A nice bottle of red Cabernet. And then he's, he's ordering my food for me. What the fuck am I going to say? He's trying to wind me and dine me. Like, like he put a lot of effort into impressing the kid. I'm appreciative of it. I mean, I would put there, – there's a million things I put in my mouth before cheese. Like my disdain for cheese. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to – I'm going to – put best foot forward man and so i sat and drank wine and tried to hide it by picking away but he, he's a he's a he's a very sharp kid he recognized that real quick it, it, it was a white cheese prosciutto pizza cheese at a, at a wine bar and this guy's over there peeling it you see this manny i've, I've been nothing but gracious respectful giving him <laughs> all the accolades in the world and he just he treats me like well, I guess he, you can. Do, I guess you can do that when you're the president of the alliance. He, you know what I mean? He 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 literally even asked the uh, the restaurant owner if he had a Ziploc so he could package up the cheese and bring it home to Courtney to taste what Tampa tastes like. <laughs> I heard him say it. He 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 won't even eat ketchup. He won't eat ketchup. He eats chicken nuggets and French fries. That's about it. Well, then I took him to another restaurant, and I don't even know if he even ate anything there. I got ordered like veal meatballs or something. <laughs> Dude, I was I was crushing bourbon, eating lamb or some foreign yeah, meat that I've never yeah, tried lamb, before. Lamb meatballs. That's what it was. <laughs> no, but we, it, time, the, like, the, 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 to put a bow on that, like if it wasn't for sports cards, I would have never I would have never done that. And then you know what I hold sacred are like the conversations, learning about you know who you know Bro Namath is as a person and some of the stuff. And you know, obviously you gravitate towards people who have like you know maybe similar you know, similar histories and stuff like that. And it's just, uh, I'm a big proponent of people like us and like you who shine a good light, man. There's a lot of negativity. I see it all the time. And as our platform grows, I'm like kind of in that spot where it's like, I'm not trying to damn my own brand, but at at some point, you know, you almost want to start calling people on some of their BS because good, honest people are being taken advantage of. And that's not cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I love and cherish the relationships that I've built in the hobby uh, 100%. So for me, like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I, I'm going to continue to build my relationships with everyone that I've met and meet new people. And I value that a lot because you never know what can come out of something, right? Like, you guys met each other through the hobby, and now you guys have your own podcast. And what who knows what comes from your podcast, right? So there's so many opportunities that I think uh, are in the hobby that people don't realize, you just got to network and be a decent human being. Yeah. And well, networking will help you eventually. Cause it seems, seems like, you know, every, like a person from every country that you could sell a TCG card from. And I bet that's from, you know, networking your, your brand. I'll do it all over Australia. Uh, I got people I chat with all the time, Australia, Hong Kong, Europe, Italy. Um, yeah. I mean, it's all over the place, Japan, it's cool. The, the, and, and when I go to travel, if I end up going to Japan, which I want to, I mean, I got people over there that I can hit up like, oh, show me around. Hopefully they can show me around like I showed you around in Tampa. <laughs> now here, here's some food you don't like and something you don't fit in. <laughs> a, 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 in Japan, 100%. <laughs> 100%. I, I have a question because um, I know um, I know a little bit more about the TCG world because I've been following you. And I know the because of the My Hero, you, there's – there's certain cards that are more limited because people go to these tournaments and win these type of cards at regional nationals. My question is, how come you're going the lazy way out and just buying the cards? Why don't you just go play the, the, the regional and go win, win the cards for free? 
you think I had the time to learn how to play these games? I honestly, I don't even know how to play the Dragon Ball game. And I'm, I'm probably the world's largest Dragon Ball collector. I don't even know how to play the game. That's awesome. Manny, like, imagine this, Manny. You wake up in the morning. You know, you go to, you go to Lifetime. You get done benching for the seventh time that week. Yep. And you're getting tagged in everything by everybody for all things. It's probably a yep. full-time job for him to repost stuff with the laughing emojis on Instagram to do anything else. <laughs> That's true. Or, or you know, he, he cuts, he cuts into a hands. steak. He cuts into the praying hands. <laughs> if I get those praying hands next time I read, like every time every I read time. a thing in my story. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest emoji that I have because I do it so often. If people, <laughs> people repost, I'm like, thank you. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about, though, in regards to, like, popularity. People genuinely like you, man. People – I don't tag people that I don't like. Like, I, like I tag that. somebody because I want to either draw attention to what they're doing, whether it's, like, you know, breaking wax or, like, you know, I think you and me both ordered bagels from Vadim on back-to-back days. Like, to draw attention, like, to show some support, show some love. And when you see that as much as you get it, man – like, I know when people tag us, it's kind of like a, a flattering feeling, but I couldn't imagine you getting tagged a thousand times a day. That would be exhausting. I'm not that cool, but I appreciate it. I'm, try, I'm trying to learn to be a little more humble because earlier you beat me up. So I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'm going to do it in real life. Yeah. <laughs> he just sits there and just says, LOL. LOL. <laughs> All right. Dude, so, so write these for me. Bench, dead, squat. In what regard? From least of favorite, my personal, or what true strength is? No, what, okay, the, the two separate. What's your favorite and then true strength? You said the three big lifts? Yep. I, I think I'm going to include uh, power cleans in there. That, that wasn't an option. This is my show, so we're going to go <laughs> bench dead squats. It's the last time I come on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's uh, bench squat deads just because my back shot now. There you go. It's the Porsche. <laughs> you know, in, 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 all, in all fairness, though, Manny's like, he when he met me, he's like, oh, you got another meathead like Bro Namath. Before he knew either of us, he had these preconceived <laughs> notions that like we just, we dry eat fucking protein powder and we're just assholes. And, you know, Manny, you can't judge books by their cover, man. I guess not. I guess not. I thought Bro <laughs> Namath just ate liver, raw liver all the time. But turns out Listen. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little deceived that I wasn't able to get on the stack that Liver King had. You know, he's that stack, by the way, it's like 15 grand a month just yes. for people out there. That's $15,000 worth of steroids every single month in growth hormones. I, have you seen Donald Cerrone? I don't know if you know he was a retired mixed yeah. martial artist. He retired and he got on a stack and he went from being like, you know, he fought at 170. Dude looks like 225 and absolutely chiseled in a few months. So like need a couple bucks for these stacks, man. These guys are putting in some serious damn work. You still got to bust your ass. You still have to bust your ass even if you take gear. And you still have to have the genetics to be able to hold the weight in certain areas. Because people don't understand, like, you know, if you had good genetics, like he probably did that you're mentioning, the MMA guy, I mean, you can blow up real quick. The Liver King looks flat right now. I'm not sure if you guys saw he's going uh, he's natty. going uh, natty. And he's like, what, seven or ten days in, and he looks just – like flat, bad, bad. And it's, it's, it's funny because you say that but he still looks absolutely phenomenal. It's just, it goes to show you how much of a drop he had because he was on so much gear. It was so much. <laughs> I'm glad you said that too. Cause now I'm going to blame my dad for my body type and it's genetics. I'm just going to tell my wife, sorry, genetics. You, 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 you married me genetics. <laughs> well, well, hold on. We're talking like small calves, you know, small shoulders. We're not talking like not working out at oh, all. Okay. <laughs> not being a fat, lazy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> not, not being one of the two thicks. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get sponsored by Raisin Canes. <laughs> That's just garbage, dude. At least, at least you guys get sponsors. <laughs> so Manuel. He was talking to me, and one thing that I have tried to secondhand with my own twist on is like entrance and exit strategy. Can yeah. you please help this young guy and like break it down, Brandon, the most simple way about the way you operate? Like, you know, it could be TCG or sports. Like, I, lose I think it's I think it's very simple, and I think people try to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah, my wife's gonna so, kick me out if I keep losing money, so I need this. Uh, so, what are you losing on? Everything. Give me an example. Give me an example. 
So, but see, the thing is, is I, I, I don't think I've made the only time I made money is if I go on whatnot. I've, I talked about this on the other show and I uh, have eBay up with whatnot and I'm buying at 80 percent of everything. And then I just resell it right when I get it. It's like the only time I'm really making money. And I think it's more of my issue is, I think, marketing. I don't a lot of people don't know exactly like me. They knew me from you know, my past. So it's not like they want, like, I don't sell a lot on Instagram. I know you guys don't post. I don't sell my stuff unless it's like eBay and stuff, but I think I I wait too long. Um, And I also came in the theory of, and I was telling Jeremy of this, I had the theory when I first came in, when new products come out, don't touch them because you wait until the value goes down to buy. Right. I buy then, well, the value's down already. The hype's over. Everyone's on to something else. And you're opposite. So, and I, I'm starting to realize maybe I buy into the hype, but just sell quicker. <laughs> but I, I don't know. There, there we go. We just, you just solved your entire problems by just opening up to the therapist that I am. Yeah, yeah there you go. I just needed, I needed the, I needed uh, two strong muscular men to talk to. No, about, I mean, but listen, what's listen, going on. it's, I was talking to my buddy about it the other day because, you know, we hit that big red Jackson holiday auto from Bowman, red shim, um, wave. People that want to buy certain players from products are going to want to spend the money within the first two weeks. So if you hit a really big card and that card's a gold, right, say out of prism, that there's people hunting that player in that parallel for a couple weeks. And then once they find it, you no longer have a buyer. They go into hiding, you know, and that's their, they're going to prospect that card. How many of those people are out there after release as a release goes on and on and on? That's why you see values go down. People want to, they want to prospect into a player, a parallel, whatever it looks like within the first couple of weeks, because they can cherry pick condition. They can get something that's already graded in good condition and they can hold on to it and stash it and then sell it. When Jeremy mentioned earlier, when season comes around, this, that, and the other, but still value still going to come down and it was a roller coaster, right? So for me, I want to go ahead and supply those people that want to prospect on those players or those cards or those parallels within the first couple of weeks or in TCG, they want to build their collection out and have those cards because they, they don't want to rip the product and create it, this, that, and the other. So I'm there for those first couple of weeks, three weeks, they have it and they may make money like the Funko story. Like I sold those early, people made money off of me. Like people will make money off me and I hope that they do. But I think that you have three week window. If you're looking to purely just make money, like that's your window there. As time goes on, you said it yourself, the interest starts to go away because now there's another product and then there's another product and there's another product and it's hard to keep up. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like, so I'm, I, I'm like the ask, like I want to make money so I could get like grail stuff. Like I want the, I'm a big DC guy. I'm also a big, like we talked about it, like shoes, clothes, or like even cards. Like I want to get like more like of the grail stuff. And I'm always trying to work my way up. But it just, I buy one card and it's just, it, it, it all comes down to like prospecting too. I think I need to get away from like actually pros, prospecting players. Dude, I'm not prospecting any player. It's just me. I don't gamble. I do yeah. not gamble. I do. I mean, yes, people are going to be like, oh, well, you ripped wax. And yes, I get that. It's a gamble. But it's also a calculated gamble. I know if I rip a case, I know there's case odds for certain parallels. I know I should be able to get at least a few hits that I can grade that's more calculated than just straight up gambling on a player. I just don't do that. Like I do not do that. That is not my thing whatsoever. It never has been the one time I did it. It was a Christian Hernandez, super fractor one one PSA 10 that I bought. I paid, here's a story. I paid 10 grand for the card raw. This was a round release. I had a huge Hernandez collection at an inception of release. I graded a lot and sold a lot. I made a lot of money off of him. So to me, that super fractor was already free because I had paid for it off of other sales to get a grail like you had mentioned. And I was already in the green on top of that. So I really wasn't too worried about it. And I had, go- I had gone on that card with another buddy, Friar Sports. And him, I owned it. It was PSA 10. And we said, look, dude, we're, we're in the green on our stuff with him. Let's just hold this and see what happens. He's going to be a stud. Could not. We had a couple buyers around when we created it, right, around release. And then those buyers left and the interest left from the player. And then we, I tried to sell it. Couldn't find anyone. I sent it to gold and it got shellacked at golden. I think it sold for like seven grand mm. as a PSA 10. I paid 10 grand for it raw. 
Yep. So for me, I looked at I looked at my buddy, I looked at Rob, and I was like, "This is why I don't hold shit." <laughs> like, because I, I I just don't want to. Of course, that card could have been forty grand. It mm-hmm. could have been forty. Just doesn't matter. I would have rather have taken fifteen. We actually had an offer for twenty one. Mm. Didn't take it because we thought it would get up to thirty, maybe yep. based upon other players. But he just didn't perform well out the gate, and you know his market kind of came down because of that. Do you if <clears throat> If somebody makes you an offer on stuff that you're selling and they're in the ballpark, do you do you haggle over 50, 100 bucks or you just move it and move on? Because that's been my biggest criticism of Manny is like if they're close, man, having yeah. that money tied up, not moving that money could be used elsewhere to help you get in the green or, you know, you I, I, don't, I don't have. I don't haggle much. Like if we're a hundred dollars off, I'll ask for $20 more of their offer just to cover shipping. That's all I say. Okay. Typically. Yeah. If, if you're in the ballpark, man, for me, I'd rather have the cash flow to be able to put into something else. And if you're trying to get a grill piece, like I'm big on that. Like what you said, Manny earlier is how I built my collection. Like how I started out was selling small stuff to get to bigger pieces. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of that, but you have to, you have to stay liquid. You have to keep that going. Because okay. guess what? Because that grill card that you may get that you paid five grand for, ten grand for, you may end up having a couple of those grails, and then a big shark may come around, and you will shit. I need to sell these three grails to get this big shark, but you have three liquid cards to be able to get that shark because you're probably buying in on like you know Messi or Ronaldo stuff. I know you're in a soccer, so you may buy stuff that's more liquid that you can go ahead and get into this you know massive one on one car that you want to get at the real grail. Yeah, I, I like that. Because, like, for example, Jeremy's talking about I have a Josh Allen. It's a rookie. It's gold out of 50. It's a obsidian gold out of 50. And it's the, it's a pop one, BGS 9.5. They're all sold for, like, what was it, 350? And uh, I was asking seven on it. And the guy says, I'll give you six. And I probably should have took it. But in 100%. my head, like, I know. And I screwed up because I was like, oh, it's pop one. Like, Josh Allen. Like, I, I, was, I don't like – I get – like we talked about in the past, I'm the type that gets pushed over all the time. We, we talked about this at Nashville. I'm like the type B and I'm trying to be more assertive and it's actually backfiring on me. Cause I'm like, I got to hold my ground on this and stuff like that. But you, you just can't be married to anything. Yeah. Right? Like to, to me, I'm not married to anything that I own. Um, if someone came to me and say, Hey, listen, I'll give you this for, for whatever you have collectible wise. I'm like, Okay. You know, if it's around what I'm thinking, I have no problem selling anything. And I think that you can't be married to stuff. Too many people are stern on their prices. You know, they're sh- these shows now and they're on comps from like a year ago. Well, it's going to get back there. And I'm not, all right, well, fine. But the cash flow is king. And yep. if you want to stay liquid, you have to keep, you have to be buying, you have to be selling, you have to keep that momentum going. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm at a dead, dead, dead brick wall right now. So that's kind of something I needed. Then, then, I, then, I, then I wouldn't buy anything until you sold a good bit yeah. and then use that cash to buy stuff. You know, let's say you had five grand worth of stuff you want to sell. You sell all five grand, even if it's eight grand in value that you were hoping for. It's still $5,000 you have in your pocket now. Maybe you put two away. Your wife is like, oh, man, this card stuff isn't all that bad. And then yeah. you take three and you go, you know, reinvest and play. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Good to know. <laughs> you know, that's one thing that uh, you said cash flow, and, and I think it's something that maybe you and I take for granted just for what we do in, in real life for our day jobs. And I just assume that everybody operates that way. And what's, what's clear is people look at money a different way. And so, you know, one thing I've tried to tell, you know, or just share with Manny, obviously you're just sharing and there's different ways to get there is the importance of constant having constant liquidity because you never know what's going to pop up. And I would say in this day and age with the amount of people who are upside down or just looking to get out, now's the time to have cash because that's where some of our biggest scores are when somebody dumps $10,000 worth of cards for, Hey, I just need four or five grand. I gotta, I gotta make my mortgage or or whatever the case may be. And so I guess that's just when you operate where cash is King, you just look at it and maybe that's been advantageous for us from a card perspective, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it's it's just different levels of money and playing field, right? So if you're in the real estate market, what are you doing? You're becoming liquid because you know that shit's about to start to kind of hit the wall here and probably late Q2, Q3, where people come in and buy these houses that are in default. Um, so yeah, so as the banks have foreclosures, the housing market has foreclosures, we have people exiting the hobby that are just getting out like the same concept. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. I, I need to get I need to stop 
I, I also go with like the wave of what people are saying. Like, for example, we go back about going, waiting on a product. So like Jeremy, cause I was saying, Jeremy, it's tough for like to buy a case of something. Right. And he was like, minuscule it, buy a box, open the box and grade it or buy something early. Hopefully you get it, get the product to the next person. And it's, I'm actually, I'm learning a lot through this two thick, like, this podcast with Jeremy because he's a vet, right? Season vet over here. I just been in the hole for so long that I was like, I need to do something. I keep buying, I'll keep buying and buying, buying. I keep- think when you sell those cards, it's going to be a very cathartic moment for you. Oh yeah. And then, and then once you do that, because we look at cards, at least from Reckless, we don't look at individual cards. We look at you know macro versus micro. Yep. And you, I think just in our in this space, there's going to be small cards that you're going to lose on. But if you're winning more than you're losing and you have a couple big home runs throughout the year, uh, it adds up pretty it's pretty nicely. And so I think, you know, Brandon said it best. You can't be married to this stuff, especially if the intent is just to roll it over to get into bigger and better cards or collectibles. So when before we bought this house that we're in now, that was like right after COVID, um, before cards were like crazy, crazy. Right. I had a bunch of Kyler Murray's and a, and a bunch of like Acuna's and Lewis Roberts. So like that was kind of my stash. I was buying stuff to like PC it. So I was like stashing away and had all these cards and I, and I was selling very seldom like here and there, nothing crazy, kind of probably like a three year at Manny. And, but yeah, at that point, you know, you were still making money because the market was starting to trend up. Yep. So we moved into the house right before we do. And I was like, oh, you know, let, let me sell some cards. And I haven't I had that to that point done like a big sales. You know what I mean? It was all like here to buy this card. So I was selling cards and like and then reinvest into another card. So we got this house. Like, listen, let's, you know, we want new furniture. It's a much bigger house. Let's let's let me go sell some cards. I got these cards laying around. So I sold them and like in a snap of a finger, it was like 30 grand. And like a lot of it was cash here locally, right? And I looked at my wife. I was like, "Fuck, this is this could be something, right? Like, I we I, I could do this." And then as soon as you get that light bulb switches in your head that you could actually sell stuff to get cash and reinvest and keep playing, once that light bulb hits, it's it's domino effect. You're going to understand it a little bit better and realize that you can have cash flow now and let's keep playing. That thirty grand that I had, you know, twenty grand with furniture and some other stuff, and then that ten grand I went and kept playing the game bought Pokemon cards then sold those Pokemon cards for a shit ton of money. Like, you know, like right after granted, that's, it's, it's, it's anomaly to happen again. However, you're still able to get back in the game and, and make some plays that you think you could make money on. No, I, I, I like this. This is like intervention for me and I love it. So <laughs> thank you. Guys. But I, but there's probably a lot of people out there like that though, man. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, it's good to bring it up. Cause there's going to be people that are listening that are in the same situation as me where they can't sell a card right now um, because of the market going down. So listen, whether you sell it now or you sell it six months from now, what are you going to make more money at now or six months? No. I'd rather have the money now because six months from now is uncertain. Yep. I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen six months. I don't know if this player is going to go to prison or retire or, you know, the market just completely screwed. So I'd rather have the cash now because I can keep playing with whatever I want to do, whether you want to buy the grail, you want to reinvest or you want to put money into your bank so your wife doesn't kill you, you know, whatever that may be. Yep. So the, the new house, congratulations. Does yep. Brady live across the street from you or to the left of you? I don't remember. I, I actually drove you by Brady's house. So don't be a smart ass. You know where I live is in the slums. <laughs> slums <laughs> my man that is that, that, those are some big damn houses over there brother i'm not gonna some lie big houses yeah yeah I, uh, I took for for people that are listening i'm from tampa we went to davis island showed them brady's house and it went down bay shore so tampa bay that's our base shore it separates uh davis island and uh like you know tampa right there it's a little peninsula kind of don't let him lie to you when i went to his house it's like a 500 five hundred thousand dollar house you know ceilings that are like 30 feet high like don't let him don't let him uh try to say that he, he's not in a mansion as well oh yeah jeremy probably has easily 18 acres and a yep. farm and houses and cows yeah for sure heated pool he has a heated pool yeah. out of nowhere could go swimming right now in negative 10 degree weather don't forget about the hot tub oh yeah and the hot tub yep yep and the hot tub so super it, it to your these kinds of conversations I think are very beneficial. And a lot of the, like the feedback that we get is people just saying like, we appreciate like honest conversation or not having a product jammed down our throat and just people being very honest and candid. 
And so I'm incredibly appreciative of your time. Before we get out of here, what's next for you? Is it just going to be more TCG um, now that Bowman's done for a little bit? Or, you know, is there where, – where could people who are interested in the hobby, you know, where might they look if uh, they're looking for some creative spots to maybe – Play, play with some money uh I, I still i firmly believe in tcg is is going to continue to to do well um you know when you look at someone posted a chart the other day that had graphs of values have gone down or what it looked like over the, the trends right and like pokemon like had like a 10 percent drop where like everything else was just like 50 percent, 40 percent. and i mean that's not that big of a loss when you consider some of the other stuff going on right and, you know, you look at that and you couple it with like the collector base and the new products that are coming out in TCG space. I think that for me, I'll continue to play in here just because I have fun with it. I genuinely have fun with it. Like it's, I watch the animes, I read the mangas, like I have fun with this. So I'll continue to, to do this, but I'll continue to do sports here and there. Um, I, 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 I have, Bowman is so much fun for me. So I'll continue to rip Bowman whenever it comes out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, one piece op2 comes out in march if you guys are looking for something to make a play on that's going to be Pierremont war it's going to be that set don't fall for the second prince uh only by the first prince so that would be released in march that's op2 one piece release two uh Pierremont war bandai has another game coming out that's going to be pretty badass manny but it's 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 funny because it's it's a collection of animes in one card set or it's a card game, so it's going to have Jujutsu Kaisen. It's going to have My Hero. It's going to have a few other things in there, uh, but they won't release it in English because they don't have the rights to My Hero in English. Mm-hmm. The one here does. So I think that's going to be a really cool set because the cards look pretty badass. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out in the pipeline. Pokemon always has a new set that may have a big Charizard and Mewtwo that does well. Um, Dragon Ball has another god rare set coming out soon so there's there's just so many different things in, in tcg to i mean you gotta think about it you're spending 60 80 dollars on a box mm-hmm. that you could hit a raw car that's 500 bucks 800 bucks what where where do people find like the new releases is it uh is it on tcg player will will those new releases be on there you know what it, you you ask a question that it's uh, it's interesting because I don't think there is any one particular site that someone can go to and say okay well, what's the catalog look like yep. for the next six months unless you're just kind of in it um, you know you 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 find that out that way but there's a lot of different pages that you can follow for content you know you can go on you can, you can even look at me I, I mean I talk about it you know pretty often what's coming out this that and the other. But I, you're you're right. It's 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 looking at. I don't think there's any one particular page or site that will tell you what's upcoming in TCG. And that's that's a shame. I just thought about that. Yeah. Is, sorry, Manny. Do you 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 had some cards posted in your story for sale today? Do you still have any TCG for sale? Uh, I sold a lot already, uh, and then I have some of the black labels still available. What what are the like? What are the black labels like price wise? I think um, one of them I have at four hundred dollars, just because it's become more of an easier car to get in a black label. Another one like eight hundred bucks, and then seven fifty. We'll take the eight hundred dollar one. We're gonna buy it here right now. We'll, right we'll now. send you. The, we'll send you the money when we we hang up, like you know, later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, and it'll be the first like we've been talking about as a podcast doing like a podcast PC to just like share with people and just like. I'm interested in the space. I know nothing about it. This is where I can lean on Manny and we'll, 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 we'll support you because you're, you're trying to sell it, give you some cash. And as a show, we'll buy it. So <laughs> <laughs> LOL, LOL. <laughs> so, so what do we just, what, what's it called? What, so what, what the hell we just buy? You, you don't, you don't know what you got. I want Whoa. the expensive one, the $800 one. <laughs> I, I only asked because I know if I said, give me the expensive one, there was probably like a, a $42,000 one. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have to I'll, sell I'll, some P-Will. I'll, <laughs> send, I'll send you a package, dude. You, you send me $800, bucks, i will send you a package like I always do. One of my starter kits like I used to do back in the day. So I, 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 need one, love it. I need one of those starter kits. What is there one punch, man? Quickly. I, so I want to say one punch, man, is going to be in that um, – that Bandai set, I think. I think I might. I might have to get some of those. Jeremy has no idea what we're talking about. This guy's the most powerful guy in the world. It takes one punch, and he takes out like the whole universe. It's, and he's bored of being a superhero. 
It's a good show. You should watch it. Have you watched Chainsaw Man yet? I haven't. I saw it. I, was it on Netflix? I need to see it. Uh, I, know, I watched it on Crunchyroll. That's a rad show. That whole concept is nuts. So I was wearing one of these shirts today, and the guy at uh, FedEx was like talking about it. He was like, oh, you watch Chainsaw Man? Like, it just, <laughs> There's just so much enthusiasm. Like, Look at Manny talking about it right now. Like, I don't know. It, I, I just have much more fun in the space. The people are a little more enjoyable to deal with. Yeah, well, you saw Jamal Williams, Jeremy, on his interview. He's like, I just want to go home and play uh, Pokemon. And the guy said, Pokemon. And he's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. And, then, and then when they did the starting lineup, he did a Nataro, uh, Nataro um, reference um, that no one understood what he was saying. So he had to break it down after the game. It was hilarious. Your guys' passion for it comes through. Like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. You guys, this could all be make-believe, and I'm like the ass of a joke. Like, I could be unpunked. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't even know any better. I'm like, man, these guys seem really jazzed about this TCG stuff. So I'm, I'm all in. Isn't there an event coming up in uh, Orlando? There is. There is in February. Actually, I want to go to the, the – it's CollectaCon. It's like the TCG, like, circuit that they do for their shows. And I, I want to say the Dallas one's supposed to be really good. Cool. I've got right, some well. cash, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to beat you to the go. punch, man. <laughs> That's funny. He's going to uh, make me go with him to be like, all right, is this a good character? Is this a good character? By, by, by it's no way, different than me dragging your ass around the show telling you yes or no. By sure. the way, I, I got um, Don from Breaking Wax to watch Demon Slayer. Ooh, you I want to see that. I want to see yep. that. I haven't seen so, it yet. So Don's over in the Philippines right now uh, in active duty going doing his thing, and he's got nothing but time. Dude, just watch this anime. Just tell me if you like it. He's okay. watched it. He t- shot me a text. He was like, Holy shit, this is great. I'm like, I, I told you. I'm like, this is fucking badass. What, what, what would Jeremy, what do you want Jeremy to start? We're going to have Jeremy start one, but we can't. I'm not committing to that. I'm committing to sending money. That's what I'll commit to. Well, we can't oh, we're, have we're, him we're, watch we're, like a, a listen, thousand episode uh, series. Jeremy, you fly enough in your first class flights that you'll have oh, yeah. time on the plane just to kind of watch something. I'm going to send you something to watch. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> On Do the it. first class, obviously. Yeah, first, first yeah, class. Yeah, first class, yeah. Yeah. Before, before you got on, before you got on, he's like, I got to fly it. I got to fly tomorrow and fly back. And he was like, the only reason I'm doing it is because they have a De- uh, Delta. What are they called? The club member where he goes sky in. Lounge. And, yeah, the Sky Lounge. He's like, that's the only reason why I'm doing it because I can go in the Sky Lounge. The sky oh, Lounge God. is epic. Oh, by the <laughs> way, Manny. Jeremy left out that when I came to pick him up, he told me, please do not bring your piece of shit truck when you pick me up. Make sure it's your 911 GT3. And I never felt more offended, but when I picked him up, there was a big smile on his face that made me happy. He's a child. He eats like one. He gets happy like one. Like It's easy anyway, to make listen, it's, it's a man of, of many talents, and you know, being chauffeured around is definitely one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's tough living. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. And I, I will say that um, between the valets, you know, how, how do I keep this clean? The valets love Brandon <laughs> because they just sit there and ooh and ah over the exhaust or the fucking, you know, the catalytic converter or whatever. I know nothing about cars. And then after we go underneath every bridge, bah, 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 every girl turns around with like a big smile on her face. Meanwhile, the dude that she's with shoots us the dirtiest fucking look. And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Dude, you're you're making it sound like I have this like absolute like shit box that just goes. Oh no, no, okay. So for for the record, it's just a loud sound, just showing that the, the power oh, or the torque or whatever. How's it go? Does it go? Bah, 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 yeah. Bah, bah, bah. It's not Put the muffler up. The muffler's rusted. No, out. no, no, no. They, they, no it, it, we left in the valet. We sat there and talked for forty five minutes about some custom exhaust or some shit. I had no it, idea. Whatever it was, of course, Brandon did it good. The guy was giving him all the praise in the world, and Brandon's like, "Oh no, it's no big deal." He sounded like my grandpa yelling at me when I was a kid. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> you know, like South Park, gravel, 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 gravel. <laughs> he told me that the bouncer let you in because you're on the list. But when he came up, they almost kicked him out. But you were like, "No, he's with me." That type of service at at these at these restaurants is no no no. Let me let me be clear. He showed me a damn fine time, my friend. That is that is a hundred percent. I know Tampa like the back of my hand. Even though sometimes I refer to it as Orlando, but that that doesn't matter to me. You know, I just I know it's in good hands down there with Brandon. Dude, I was just starting to warm up to you again after I forgot about that. You had to bring it back up. <laughs> hey, dude, it's late. You have a business to run. We really appreciate your time. 
I, I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, what you're doing and the way you treat people is very refreshing, especially in a world where politically people are at odds, you know, socially, economically, people are at odds in a hobby that's supposed to be escapism and fun. People are at odds. Mm-hmm. It's refreshing knowing that you take time out to help a couple of idiots up in Michigan. And I know that the people who listen to this, uh, if they're not already following you, they will. And they'll be grateful for, you know, some of the sage wisdom that you provided. I appreciate you guys having me on. This was a blast. I really do. So. I, I we need we need to have uh, Bro Namath on more to talk TCG because I could talk TCG all the time with him. Well, I can't wait to get my card in the mail now that I've got now that's my money. You better believe I'm gonna fucking learn what my money's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And with that, I, I, <laughs> on, sorry. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed your hobby release and talk to you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>